This car is a 1906 Stanley Steamer Model H, and it's probably, arguably, America's first muscle car. And it was also the world's fastest production car in 1906, faster than any other European car. And a factory racer of this car achieved the world's land speed record of over 127 miles an hour that stood for four years until 1910 when it was finally beaten. Our 1915 photo of the car is the oldest photo of an existing Stanley Steamer in existence. There are older photos of cars, but all those cars have disappeared. My brother Alan and I knew about this car since as young as we could remember. The whole time we were growing up, it was sitting up at a family friend's cabin, the Chamberlains. It was quite a legend up there. The thing was just sitting in the pine needles, you know, and we always would sort of play on it look at it and so forth. My grandfather, uh, Leon Hoyt Chamberlain, uh, drove this car over Donner Summit in 1915. I took a video, or actually it was a Super 8 millimeter film of my grandfather telling this story. And on the return trip, he got told to go through the railroad tunnels to save time. They had torpedoes on the tracks to warn the trains that there was workers in the tunnel and he was laying down next to one of those when a train went through, and so he was deaf for a week after the torpedo exploded. So when we were young kids, we'd see these parts, and it was always very intriguing to think that these were not parts of a gasoline car, but parts of a steam car. And my brother and myself restored the car over a 20-year period from 1996, and we just finished it up this last September of 2016. If you look at the car, most of what you see is wood. The only thing that's metal is the axles front and rear and the engine and the, the springs. So by the time we saw the car, most of what you're seeing now had rotted away. So the challenge was getting the accurate dimensions of what the wood body should be. That was far and away the greatest challenge. The metal parts were not a challenge because obviously we had most of those. In 1996, when we uh, purchased the parts, from the Chamberlain family. We wanted to make sure we had every single part there was. So Richard Chamberlain showed us where the car had sat for most of the 80 years. I used my metal detector and we looked with the detector for hours and we did find quite a few original parts including the brass hubs and other parts because we took every pain to use every single original part we could. In the steam car, what would normally today be the hood actually encloses the boiler that makes the steam. You could liken that to just a gigantic Bunsen burner. It, it has a very hot fire underneath and the steam is then directed down into a flue, an exhaust flue, and out the back. So the steam is made up here where the engine would be on a modern car and Underneath the steering wheel is the throttle. So when the, the throttle is closed, the car doesn't move. But with a steam car, by just moving this throttle forward, the car goes. And the farther you push the throttle, obviously, the faster it goes. No transmission and no clutch, which was a huge advantage in 1906 because manufacturers were still learning how to build transmissions and clutches. So uh, the restorer was impressed with the painstaking authenticity of the car when he did the paint job for us. So he suggested that we enter it into the annual Pebble Beach Car Show. That would be a great honor because it's by invitation only. You can't buy your way into that car show. So we are in the process of filling out the application and hope to be selected for that Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance, which will be in August of 2017.